And hello everybody, give me a honk on your horn If you're happy to be a part of the church So good to have you guys with us in the uh, presence of Jesus And we're just so happy that we're in unity of uh, churches around the whole of Torbay Here at Driving Church this morning uh, Just to let you know, um, when we come to worship You're allowed to get out of your cars But make sure you stay in your individual car bubbles yeah. And you keep your two metres distances So that social distancing is there uh, Yeah Unfortunately, we don't have any lyrics on sheet today, um, so hopefully you guys can all access the internet and you can find it on our website and our Facebook page. Yeah, so I'm just going to pray over you guys and we just hope that and pray that it's going to be amazing and we're going to have a good time in the presence and the love of Jesus this morning. So Father, I just pray over everybody right now. We just pray for your Holy Spirit right now just to fall upon them, Father, with your love. Uh, with your power, Father, and with your authority, Jesus. Right now, we just pray um, for the gates of heaven to open up so that we can have a good time, Father, with you this morning, Jesus, with you, uh, Daddy God, this morning, with your love, Father. We, we just pray for um, uh, this unity, Father. We just pray for it to carry on throughout uh, Christmas and throughout the next year, Father, of all the churches in the bear. We just want to see revival happen and something good happen in Torbay, Father, that is of your kingdom here on earth, Father. In your name, Jesus, amen. Come on, guys, let's hear those horns. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, amen. Come on, Josh. Run. <laughs> We've got Dave on the piano this morning. <laughs> there was a honk on your horn for Dave. <laughs> Come on, let's worship the name of the Lord this morning. And I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah. By the way, you're allowed to get out of your cars. Oh, well done, you over here. Well done. <laughs> Yeah, you got in there straight away. You are allowed out of your cars. And isn't it wonderful we've got weather to be able to get out of the car? <laughs> I'll raise a hallelujah.
ago in uh, a bit of our prophetic session, as you could call it, and uh, he's just got some stuff he wants to share. So give you a, give uh, where is he? He's behind you. No, it's not that type of show. Here he is. Good morning, good morning, Church 180. Um, so God, early morning, um, wake up last night, and God gave me some stuff to 
to uh, release to you guys. Now, basically what's going to happen is you're going to have two, two minds going on here. One will say, well, who's this guy? I'm not going to listen to this and reject what I say. I want you to battle against that. And if this is for you, choose that voice that says, yes, I'm going to come at the end for the, for the little drive and prayer time and get paid for. So, somebody's got complications with, with their eyes. They need eye surgery. If that's you, like I say, come to the end, drive in, you get paid for. Lots of guts problems, but I think it's more than just standard kind of doggy tummies with the pizza you've eaten. It's like gastroenteritis, it's stuck on that, in that kind of ballpark. Headaches, if you suffer from regular headaches, come and get prayed for and pray that off of you. Because God is a good God, amen? We're going to see some things shift today. Um, left toe issues, left toe issues, that's a weird one, but quite specific. Left toe issues, if that's you, again, come. And then this, this is something to feel but quite general, but I really believe that the Lord released some of this stuff, or all this stuff. So low self-esteem, if you, you're feeling really low, low self-worth. Now, none of us want that um, for the body of Christ, so we want to pray that off of you today. And then, uh, last one, anger issues, any problems controlling anger. Now, we're not going to get you to stand up, put your hand up, that would be a little bit embarrassing, but come to the, come to the drive through and we'll pray for that off of you. Hallelujah, amen. Give you two your horn. Hey. Over to Paul again. Okay, and then we've got somebody coming to lead us in prayer for somebody that needs a healing touch. Here comes Ginny. You see how organised we are? This is how driving works, by the way. Because you, This is your first time we welcome you to uh, driving. And uh, we're very relaxed, as you can tell. And uh, we just, we'll go with the flow. Is that okay? Driving church. Good to see you all. <laughs> um, so I want to share this morning because um, a friend of mine should have been baptized today, and sadly she's too unwell to come here. And so I thought perhaps as a church we could pray for her because she is determined to be here next week. And be baptised in the sea. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, we need to be praying into the situation. So, I, I thought to read Matthew 9, 20 to 22. And suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. For she said to herself, if only... I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. But Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he said, Be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. And this is the same Jesus that we worship today. This is the same Jesus that heals today. So I'd like us to pray for Sarah that she will be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, she will be healed and she will be here next week to join us and she will be baptised in the name of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Okay. Wow. Thank you, Ginny. Got somebody else who wants to come and pray for the persecuted church and uh, come and lead us in prayer, would you? That would be wonderful. So we're going to pray for um, a situation which we have recently heard about um, 
in Azerbaijan, there's a, a city called Ganja, and these, this city has been bombed overnight by Armenian forces. Drones have been used, um, civilians are, are the casualties, and there's a pastor that um, I know personally whose house has been damaged by the bombing. So I'd like to pray for the Christians in Azerbaijan today and for some of the Armenians who are also Christians and pray for this situation, that it doesn't escalate but it ceases. So in the name of Jesus, that mighty, powerful name, we pray for your people in this land where there is great persecution at this time, Lord. We pray, Lord, for your hand of mercy, your hand of blessing, to be over those people, Father, to protect them, to heal them, and to find them peace in the midst of the turmoil that's going on there. Father, we pray your protection over each one of them. We pray for your angels, Lord, to be around them, to surround them with your peace and with your protection. And Father, we just ask for each one whose lives have been affected by this, Lord, to press into you today and to know you to be their power and their strength. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Well, we're just going with it for a little while here. Just uh, sensing what the Holy Spirit's doing is a little bit different so far. But uh, we, we prayed for healing last week, as you'll remember, and we've got a testimony. So I'll just pass over the mic. Right, this is here my Corky. You say, hi Corky! Hi Corky! She's look wonderful. She's got an amazing testimony to tell you. She's very, very nervous. She shouldn't be, because she's got a mouth about Yama. But, um, yeah, she's very nervous. Here she is, Corky! Hi everybody as well. Uh, I was, I've been really poorly. I haven't been to church for a couple of weeks. The doctors had me on Tramadol and Codeine and all sorts of medication because I had a tumour in my back. And uh, last Sunday, he says to me, Corky, go to church. I'm like, I can't, I can't drive. I mean, you'll be fine, I promise, go. So I went and I went for prayer. And I had three people pray for me. Okay? I've got no lump in my back and I'm not in pain. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? I felt the lump last week and I saw how much pain she was in and I've just felt it. And it's like, practically like, like a pin in the back. So praise God for healing hands. Yeah, yeah. yeah, well done. So what, <laughs> this is, we're really just going with the flow now. Um, and so Dave, I'm just invited David back again to just share the things that he felt God say to him that God wants to just touch today and, and, and heal and bring deliverance, etc. And um, yeah, use that, Mark, great idea. And uh, so I just want him to remind uh, you of those things so you can respond. And then... Dave, the other Dave, on the piano, is just going to share a song that they were singing at Open Heavens. And uh, we're just going to have a few people come out and pray for anyone. And what you need to do in response is put your hand up and we'll come and pray for you. They'll have face masks on and uh, they'll come and they'll just pray. Uh, and if you need, if, even if he doesn't mention it, if you need a healing touch this morning, then just put your hand up. And they'll come and they'll pray with you right now. So it's complications with, with your eyes. Need for eye surgery for the complications. Uh, gut problems, gastroenteritis, those kind of under, under that umbrella. Uh, headaches, persistent headaches. Left toe issue, like a problem with your left toe. Or anything on your left foot. Low self-esteem, really low self-worth. And finally, in the word of anger issues, problems controlling anger. Just be your hand up for competition. Thank you. Okay, so just right now, we've got a few people over here going out to pray. So if you need prayer, there seems to be a few people over here. Uh, anyone over here needing prayer, just give us a signal. Let's find somebody down there. Believe in a God that heals. Just reach out to God today. Because we can't do the healing here. Only Jesus does the healing. 
I want you to, to sing along with this song with me. It says, Heal me. Heal me. I need a brand new touch from you, Lord. A brand new touch. Do you need that? Heal me. Let the fullness of your life now be restored. You know, Jesus gives us fullness of life, perfect healing, perfect peace. It's time just to reach out to Him and say, Lord, I want that too. Just renew the fullness of your life in me, in my body. My mind. Just sing with me. Heal me. That's all you have to say. Heal me. Heal me. I need a brand new touch from you. Yes, heal me. Let the fullness of your love now be restored. Get the words? I'll just give me a hop. It's okay. You can do a hop. It's fine. No, I don't want it. Heal me, heal me, I need a brand new touch from you, Lord. Heal me, heal me. Let the fullness of your life now be restored. Just reach to him now. Just reach out and ask him for that. Thank you, Lord. Heal me. For I need a brand new touch from you, Lord. Jesus, we just turn our eyes upon you. We 
cast our gaze towards your beautiful, beautiful face. With the rays of the sunshine, we come to you, Father God. We just cast our face towards you. We just thank you, Father God, for your amazing, sweet, tender touch. Your amazing, sweet, tender hands of healing that's available to each and every single one of us, Father God. And we know that in you, Lord God, hearts and lives can be healed and hearts and lives can be restored. We thank you, Father God. Heal me. I need a brand new touch from you, Lord. Heal me. Heal me. Jesus, that even out here in the car park, your presence comes and abides with us and moves amongst us. Thank you, Jesus, for your wonderful presence. We worship you. Never gives up, never runs out on me. You love me, you never gives up, never runs out on me. You love never fails, you never gives up, never runs out on me. You love never fails, you never gives up, never runs out on me. You love never fails, you never gives up, never runs out on me. Never fails, Never runs out on me. You love me, you never give 
just want to acknowledge that, uh, you know, when things like this happen and God, the Holy Spirit comes and takes over, then it just it's just the happiest times in my life when God just comes in and goes, I want to do something different and uh, I want to do something fresh. And so it's always good just to soak. It's always good just to be in his presence. It's also good to just flow with the Spirit. The river of the Spirit, wherever it flows, will just follow you, Jesus. So, Lord, we just want to thank you for your presence. We want to thank you for the testimonies of healings throughout driving. We want to say thank you for the testimonies of salvation during driving. We want to say thank you, Jesus, for the spirit of unity that you, Holy Spirit, has created in this car park over these weeks, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, that all the glory, and all the praise goes to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for you are the only one who is worthy of all praise. And so we say thank you to you, Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Give the Lord a hope. I'm just setting up. Just want to pray this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being in this car. Father, I just feel your presence here, your sweetness. Father, you're hovering in this car park, Father. Your Holy Spirit is here. And I just pray, Father, that as I bring the word, Father, that I pray for that anointing that people hear from you and not me, Lord, this morning. In the name of Jesus. Amen. What a privilege it is to stand in this car park. Um, my list, I've got a list this morning. I'm not really a person for lists, but I don't want to miss anything. Um, I was up uh, quite late last night um, just seeking the Lord. And I felt the first thing is to say is the Lord wants you to listen. Listen. Don't talk with one another. Guys at the back. Don't talk to with one another, but listen, okay? And I've got to make an apology uh, to Paul because the other day when uh, he was um, preaching, 
somebody started talking to me and I had to kind of, I was told, hold on a minute, Paul is preaching. So I will apologise to Paul right from now that I'm sorry. I like to be encouraged. So I don't know if you like to be encouraged. And over the weeks, I've been encouraged in such a way that it's been a blessing to me. And I want to say thank you to the youth at the back. You know, um, you come up and you uh, you come and park in their play, uh, in in your place in your cars. But these youth have come every month, every week, every Sunday, without fail, to come and help. And it's blessed me. If I came just to say that this morning, I have been truly blessed by these young guys helping. And they've kept a smile. And they've had their bats and they've been waving them. And that remind, you know, reminds me of the helicopter landing, you know. And so I want to say thank you to them at the back. And it reminded me of a time um, a few, quite a while ago when I started uh, Mount Olive. And these two guys came along and they were... 15, 16, they had horrendous backgrounds. They were both called Ryan. And I felt the Lord say, I want you to disciple them. I want you to spend time with them in prayer, supporting them, and bringing them out of this uh, trouble they're in. And I spent several weeks and months and uh, probably went into years and they are thinking, Lord, is there, is there a way out of these problems? They were both called Ryan. One joined the Royal Marines. And uh, I've always felt that he's going to be a chaplain in the Royal Marines. And last time I saw him, he said, I'm started to train to be a chaplain in the Royal Marines. So I went, wow. After all those years. And lately... The other Ryan has just been ordained as a vicar. And you think, wow, these two guys that had no hope. You know, Jesus came and gave them hope, gave them direction, gave them a reason to live. And over the years, you've seen what a blessing they've been to others. And their testimony is awesome. And I just want to share that if there are people here that um, perhaps you're having a hard time, perhaps you, you've tried to minister, you've tried to share, don't give up. This isn't the place of giving up. The Lord said persevere. In my last church before um, I started Mount Olive, um, and I was there for four years, and the I felt the Lord in the first first year said, I want you to go to the prayer meeting before the Sunday service. And so I went down and there were two old people, husband and wife, they're in their 80s. And I just received God's presence of them. What wise. They've been in um, their church for a long time. And I just received of them the presence of the Lord. And what a privilege it was to be in their presence praying. And you just felt there were just the three of us. The, the church was about 100, 150 people, but only three of us went to the prayer meeting. And just before I left, they called me to one side, and they said to me, Oh, we want to thank you, Paul, for constantly, week by week, coming and encouraging us. I went, I encouraged you. I went, hold on a minute. No, no, no. You encouraged me. He said, no, no, no. He said, because you came, we came. And we felt that the Lord said, I want you to support this youngish man. I was youngish then. In prayer. And so we can encourage one another. So 
I'm talking to the guys at the back that if you've got the opportunity to pray with older people that have soaked in the presence of the Lord, do so. Because you can encourage them as well as they can encourage you. What a journey. I want to just turn to Scripture this morning. In Timothy, 2 Timothy 4, 7. This um, has been brought up several times over the last uh, few weeks. Paul brought it. I brought it. Um, and for those who don't know, that my wife died um, just over six weeks ago. And this was brought us to her funeral. I have fought the good fight. Do you know that we were in a fight, guys? And you can't fight on your own. We need one another. And this my uh, message is this morning that we need one another. We need perseverance. Don't give up. We have kept the faith. We've run the race. You know this is a race. From the beginning of when you ask Jesus into your life, this is a race. A constant race. Not to give up and, you know, if you see people failing, get hold of them and let them run with you. And as we get weary, don't be, don't have pride. You know, I've um, I just want to um, say thank you to a, a couple that have been helping me with paperwork. Some of you know and some of you don't know that I suffer from dyslexia. And my wife has um, done the paperwork for uh, 35 years. She's been doing the VAT and, you know, and I said, oh, can you file it? File? And she's got her own system. Well, she had her own system. But now she's gone up, I'm totally lost. And this couple has come along and supported me. And willingly, I mean, they offered before I even asked, can I help you? And I just want to say thank you to them. Because we need one another. And it would have been easy to have pride, wouldn't it? To say, no, 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 I, I can manage. And, you know, I'm a fella. I'm, you know. I'm, you know, fellas that... Funny people. And all the, I've noticed all the wives are nodding. Um, because they're stubborn. We think we can do it all. We don't admit to anything. But, you know, guys, we need to humble ourselves and say thank you for those that want to help us. As we go into um, scriptures, I want to turn to James. James 5, 12. Above all things, brethren, so he's talking to the church. Do not swear, either by heaven or by earth, nor with any other oaths. But let our yeses be yes, and our noes be no. I was in Freemasonry for 14 years, and if anybody wants to have my testimony, it's uh, online, Mount Olive. But the Lord brought me that scripture to bring me out of Freemasonry. My life was about to change, and I didn't know. I'd been in it for 14 years. I'd helped, supported financially, physically, because I thought it was right. And we can be in things that we think are right. We think they're godly. And we can look from the outside onto the Freemasons and think, you know, <laughs> they're, worship, uh, they're worshiping Satan. They are, but they don't know. And it's through the power of prayer that they will be released. And often people have given CDs and uh, my testimony to people. 
um, and they've come out of Freemasonry because the power of the Lord is in the testimony. It's the truth of your testimony in the, by the blood of the Lamb. And so if anybody would like any further uh, information afterwards, then you know I'll be around. But I just wanted to bring that. Is anyone, and you know, over the weeks, we've been into the presence of the Lord and doing what the Word is saying. And I just want to bring what the Word says uh, that we should be willing to do. Is anyone amongst you suffering? Let him pray. You know, there is a, in certain Christian circles, um, people say that we shouldn't pray for ourselves. What a load of rubbish. It says in the Word that we should pray for ourselves. Is anybody cheerful? Let him sing praises. Is anyone amongst you sick? Let him call on the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing them with oil in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Lord. That's what we do in faith. And the prayers of the faith will save the sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And if anyone commits sin, he will be forgiven. You know, there are Christians that still don't believe they can be forgiven. They have this heavy heart. They have this weight on them. But we need to be honest. We need to be truthful. We need to get away from our pride and our trying to hide away from our sin. We need to pray for one another. Confess your sin trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed and the effective fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. When I read that scripture, I knew that I had no fervency in me. I knew that I wasn't righteous. But when I read it, I thought, if, I, if it's in the Word, it's true, and I can get to that place. And it's a journey, isn't it, to get rid of the rubbish that are in our lives. And I had so much rubbish that I wanted to be in that place. You know, there is a scripture that says, the eyes of the Lord go to and fro across this land, searching for a man that is loyal. When I read that scripture, Scripture, it jumped out of me, and I went, Lord, I want to be that man. I'm not there, but I want to be. And so I, I'm a tree surgeon for trade, and I, re, I used to have so many large pile of lo uh, logs. <clears throat> I stood on those logs about 15, 20 foot up, and raised my hands and stood there for several hours, saying, Lord, don't let your eyes go across me without seeing my heart. And I expected them to come and tap me on the back and say, oh, yes, well done, you know, I, I like the words and I'm encouraged. And he didn't say that. He didn't do that. He came and whispered in my ear and said, Paul, I went, Paul, he knows my name. Paul, I'm going to try you and prove you. And out of my mouth, without realising, Without thinking about it, I said, well, give me your best. And after I said that, I thought, whoa, well, hold on a minute. I've just spoken to Almighty God, and I said, give him, give me your best. Wow. Stupid or what? And you know, the Lord has taken me through battles, storms, challenges. He's never leaves me or forsaken me. He's always been there at the start. And when he's asked me to do things, you know that he didn't say do them for me. He always said, I want you to do them with me. I can do that. Lord, what do you want me to say? 
Just say the things I speak to you to repeat them. That's how I can do that. It's simple, isn't it? The gospel of Christ is simple. All you have to do is follow it. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. You know, when you read that, he's like us. He's no, nothing special. He's like us. He's got a nature like us, but he loves the Lord. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Three years and six months. Then he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain. And the earth produced fruit. Wow. You know, we want to see fruit on our land, don't we? But it will take prayer. For each and every one of us, we need to pray. Pray for our families, those people who we work with our pastors, our people in our churches, our governments, the Queen. We need to pray, and we need to pray earnestly. Not like it's, well, it might happen. Pray that it's going to happen. Pray with that positive attitude. And then he's speaking to the brethren again. Brethren, if anyone amongst you wanders away from the truth, Someone will turn him back. You know, instead of kicking people out of our fellowships, when we see people getting wrong, we need to have the love of Jesus. We need to see them through the Lord's eyes and have the kindness and spend time with them to bring them back. To bring them back to where they should be, where the Lord has called them to be. We all get it wrong. And it says in the word that don't point your finger at your brother or your sister because you may be next. We never know what's around the corner. Now this is still to, talking to the church. Let him know that who turns a sinner from the errors of his ways will save his soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. This may um, kind of uh, rock a bit of your theology, but I believe you can lose your faith as a believer. I think that you can turn away and keep on going away and away. And I'm not talking about just when you get it wrong daily. I'm talking about turning away. But when somebody turns that person back, it will save their soul. That's what the word says. I believe that. Years ago, when I was, uh, I, may, I had an advert in the uh, paper, and I needed somebody to come and give me a hand with uh, doing some tree work. And this sailor, he was a fisherman, and he'd been a fisherman for 20 years. He came to work for me, and he was in um, the Cod Wars. You may, some of you remember them. You know, he was a hardened fisherman. He used to go off for uh, three weeks at a time, and um, he would have known the weather because it meant life or death to him. And one day he said to me, um, Have you seen the postman? I went, what, the man with the uh, dressed in red and with a bag over his shoulder? He said, no, 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 no. He said, have you seen the postman? He said, sometimes when it's a pure blue sky, a cloud will come very low, very fast, like a steam train, and come over. I went, no, I haven't seen that. He said, well, it's a postman. It's to say that it was bad weather coming. 
I went, no, I've never seen that. He said, oh, run. He said, you get that as sin. And it means that what you do is run. You run to port. You don't get stuck out in the middle of the channel, or out in the oceans. And I went, oh, right. Okay, no, I haven't seen it. And I just brushed it off, carried on working. Following day, amazing. Blue sky like this. Now, aren't we blessed by this weather, guys? Wow. <clears throat> I saw this cloud, like a, like a, about like as big as a football, we'll say, shall we, for a minute? As big as a football, just come in, like cotton wool. But it was showing so fast and fast, and then there was another one. And then there was another one, and then there was another one, and they kept on coming. He's just puffs of clouds. And I stopped, he was using a chainsaw, and I said, um, Rod, is this what you're talking about? And he went, wow. He said, within 48 hours, we are having such a storm. I went, oh, right. I said, well, this job we're doing is going to go into tomorrow as well. He went, you won't want to work tomorrow. So I said, well, what about if we work a bit later? And we worked up to 10 o'clock at night, 9, 10 o'clock, and we finished the job. Because I, I don't know if you've ever tried sweeping up sawdust when it's raining and the sawdust floating away before, you know, you get hold of it. It's a bit uh, challenging. Anyway, we fit, and it was dry, it was lovely. We finished it, and I said, you can have tomorrow off now, fully paid. He went, oh, great. He said, but I won't want to be working outside. And the following day, we had this torrential rain. It was blowing, and I thought, well, and I stayed indoors and did some working out and whatever, and I just thought, wow. And I've never forgotten that. It was before I was a Christian. And things stick in you, those Those little stories, those little things. And uh, so I just want to turn to Kings, uh, 1 Kings 18.41. And Elijah said to Ahab, go eat, drink, for there is the sound of abundant rain coming. It hadn't rained for three and a half years. But Elijah said, there is abundant rain coming. And you know that as I've been praying and thinking about that, you know sometimes we are in our situations, and you may be at home, you may be in you know, a workplace, and it's been so dry. Nobody is interested in the gospel. Nobody wants to hear from you. They take a take the mick out of you. They won't talk to you. And it's been so dry. But the Lord wants to encourage you this morning. There's an abundant rain coming. There's an abundance. And you can hear it. If you know the weather, if you know the seasons, like this fisherman, he knew, and he told me, and suddenly I know, there's something coming. There's signs, you know, that we're here because the Lord wants to show us signs that God is on the move. Do you believe that? Yes. Amen. Amen. So Ahab went up and ate and drank. Elijah went up to the top of Karma. When he bowed down on the ground and put his head between his knees. If you were at the um, open heaven on Friday, there was a lot of kneeling. There was a lot of people on their faces. The presence of the Lord was awesome. 
But I don't want to encourage you, of course, to come next time. And he said to his servant, Now look towards the sea. So he went up and looked and said, There's nothing. Have you ever been in a, a situation where you've perhaps gone down on the seafront to you know, speak to somebody? Or you've gone into church with an attitude, well, I want to bless somebody today. And there's nobody there. I want to talk to someone. My brother just thinks I've lost the plot. He's so anti. But I haven't given up. For years, he's just said, Paul, I'm just not interested. I'm not interested. I don't believe in God. He said, you believe in this Jesus person. I don't. So don't go on. Bit of a challenge, huh, for me? up from the sea. So he said, go and save the Ahab. Prepare the chariot and go down before the rain stops him. I'm going to tell you that I've seen the clouds of the Lord. I feel that there's a storm coming. There's a mighty storm, a mighty presence. And if you're hanging back, this storm is going to overtake you. And what's this about? This is about a preparation that the Lord is preparing us. You know, Paul and I are already arranging for outreach at Christmas. But I believe that lives are going to be changed before that. People are going to be healed today, tomorrow. We are going to be witnesses to Christ Jesus. Not to ourselves. Don't be afraid of the gospel of Christ because it's the power of God. Don't hold back, guys. I want to encourage you to go. And if you have to go six times, you need to go seven times, don't give up. Keep on going. That servant went up and down, up and down, seven times. Don't give up. Have perse perseverance this morning. Be blessed. If you haven't had prayer, or you've had prayer, and it hasn't worked, then come again. Don't give up. Have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't know Jesus this morning, this is the day. You may have been coming for several weeks, and you've thought, oh, I don't know about this lot. Is it the truth? Wow, I tell you what, it's the truth. Jesus Christ totally changed my life, and that's why I'm, I'm standing up here. Not because of me, but because I serve the Almighty God. People are trying to put badges on me over the years. What denomination are you? Where do you come from? What church? Do you? I said, and I've come to a place of saying to people, I'm a bond servant of Jesus Christ. I'm a bond servant of Jesus Christ. That's all I need to be. I'm a representative and an ambassador. And whoever I go for, uh, to, the kings, the queens, the royalty, those who are in power, those in authority, the council, whatever, I come with that authority of Jesus Christ. And that's knowing, knowing in our hearts who we are, who we belong to, who's with us. He's never asked us to do something for us, He's always asked us to do things with us. I want to encourage you this morning. Now it happened 
in the meantime, that the skies became black with fire, and the wind and the heavy rain. So Abraham, so Ahab, rode away. When the land of the Lord came upon, sorry, the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he said, Guard up your loins and run ahead of Ahab. You know, we need to put up our loins, we need to get our skirts, tuck them in our belly, tuck them in our belt, and we need to run, guys, not hold back. The danger is that we hold back and we miss, and the storm is going to overtake us. We don't want to be overtaken, we want to ride with it. You need to be a people who are willing. And over the next few weeks and a few months, there's going to be opportunities for us to go out and reach the lost. But you may have to start in your house. You may have to start in that place where you work, you shop, you spend time. You need to pray. You need to pray on your knees earnestly. Lord, give me the words. Give me the opportunity to say the right words. Bless you. That's ever enough. I'm going to pass on to Paul and the team. If you want to have a word with me, I'm I'll be over there. In fact, Freemasonry or anything else that I've brought this morning. Perhaps you're feeling a bit it's all right for ever other people except for myself. It's all right for you. You just need prayer. No, the Lord hasn't given us a fear, a spirit of fear, but he's given us a spirit of power, love, and sound mind. Power, love, and sound mind. Take that on board this morning. Bless you. Thank you for listening. Amen. Just to... Uh... Let you know then, uh, thanks Paul for bringing that word, we appreciate it, and uh, a challenge as well uh, to every single believer here and over the weeks that we've had driving. I, I uh, can't believe this is week 18, and uh, it's 18 weeks since we started driving, and uh, we praise God for every week that we've had here in the car park, and uh, just to let you know that... Uh, Yeah, get you get you stand by your bed, isn't it? Yeah. Get, get into position, ready for action. Um, yeah, so there we go. So we've done 18 weeks of driving. Now, uh, Paul, he's going now, but uh, Paul um, and I have had a real vision to uh, do more uh, together. We felt the call of God upon our lives, really, to work in partnership and to move things forward um, to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we... We're excited about uh, some of the things that we felt God speaking to us about. And, you know, in reality, one of the things we've said throughout driving is that we do not want to do anything unless God wants us to do it. And we've asked the Lord each and every step of the way, do you want this person to speak? Do you want us to do this? Do you want us to do that? And we've just taken it really step by step and, 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 and sort of followed his leading very cautiously and prayerfully, and uh, that's really the spirit of what we've been doing uh, over these 18 weeks. Now, I've got some news, and the news is this. This next Sunday will be the final drive-in church, okay? So next Sunday will be the last drive-in church. Now, this is not due to the weather forecast. 
It's not due to the winter. It's not due to anything with the council or anything like that. It is purely because we are planning things for December. And so we just feel, or I just, I won't say Paul, because Paul will soldier on for uh, till Jesus returns. And, uh, you know, that's a quality of Paul's, isn't it? Um, that he just keeps going relentlessly for the gospel of Jesus Christ. But we, we sense, as our church, we sense that, uh, and Paul's not in disagreement with this, by the way, uh, that we just sense that October would be a, the end of October would be a good place to sort of finish. And then we want to take the month of November to plan the, for December and to strategize and to organize ourselves because we don't want it just to stay as Paul and me, the two Pauls. You know, when somebody's called John and somebody's called John, you call them first John and second John, and it works, doesn't it? But unfortunately, you can't do that with Paul. So, you know, Paul and I are just feeling that um, that uh, we want to do something at Christmas. And so we're looking at the possibility. Of, uh, but what we really want to do is we want to work with other churches. And so we want you, if you're representing a different church to Paul and mine, we want you to go to your churches and we want you to encourage them to get involved with what we're planning uh, for December. And because of when you watch the news and because of all the, uh, 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 I don't even know how to describe it, it's such a cr crazy time, isn't it? All the talking in Parliament and discussing and trying to decide what's the best, and talk, making up names like circuit breakers and all that sort of stuff. It just gets so confusing. But uh, we know that whatever we do has to be within the law, and we understand that whatever we plan, we're going to have to respond to the moment uh, as, as to where the government has got things and uh, with regards to what the local authority have done, with regards to the tier system and where we're at and all that. It's so complicated, isn't it? And so we are we are positioning ourselves to plan for Christmas, but we're also positioning ourselves to be ready to react to wherever we are in the coming weeks, okay? And so we are discussing and talking with some of the ministers in Paynton, uh, there's a group of ministers now meeting together to pray, uh, and uh, we, we're, we're meeting together to pray first, uh, but we were talking on Friday about the possibility of doing something in the centre of town uh, in Paynton uh, with the trailer and going outdoors with Christmas carols and reaching out to lost people, but we don't know what's possible, okay? Because every week it changes, okay? And, and, but then we felt, unless we're in lockdown, we are hoping and we are praying that we'll be able to have the car park for at least, at minimum, that we would be able to do a drop. I'm making up a name now. Uh, that we'll be able to do a drive-in carol service for all the churches in the area uh, and any churches outside of Penton as well. So. So I appreciate that. that. That makes me feel like it's a good idea. At last, I've had one. And uh, yeah, so that's that's the thinking. That's the plan. We just just don't know what's going on, do we? You're all like that as well. We're all like that as well. But what we want to do is, soon as God says, and the thing is, we didn't just think, oh, let's do something to Christmas. But um, what happened was, some of you came to us and said and contacted us and said that we need to do something for Christmas. We need to do something for Christmas. And so uh, we, I had actually prayed that if the Lord wanted us to do something for Christmas, that we would have uh, five different people contact us and say, we need to do something for Christmas. And so we're responding to you, and we're responding to the leading of the Holy Spirit, and we're going to have uh, definitely, hopefully, Prayerfully, um, council agreement, you know, hopefully as well, that we can do a drive in uh, Christmas carol service. At worst, that's the worst case scenario that we think is a carol service here in the car park, okay? 
Uh, best case scenario, isn't it? We were in every single town, on the streets, evangelising, preaching the gospel, singing carols, going for it. But, uh, but uh, you know, we, we will, in the worst case scenario, we'll be here, okay? Uh, but we've got to ask the council for permission to do that yet. So, so God is doing some amazing things and bringing things together. Uh, not only that, but we've been asked to help in Dawlish. Uh, right away, we're in Dawlish to do some stuff over there with the trailer. And uh, we are just uh, feeling our way with some other places as well. God's leading us in different ways. So there's so much going to be going on in December that I feel it would be good for us to have a little bit, a bit of a break. Uh, and obviously Paul's church will be looking to open again, and he's been doing Open Heavens on Friday, uh, socially distance and COVID compliance. And uh, we, we're going to be opening our church this coming Wednesday. And uh, we'll, we'll be, re- if you saw the state of the church, you'll be, you'll be thinking, well, are you really opening on Wednesday? But we are opening on Wednesday night for a night of worship and prayer. And uh, we just, uh, you need to, if, if any of our people who haven't had the emails and, and newsletters and things, you need to book online uh, to be part of that. Okay, so um, that's where we're at with things. I thought I'd just give you a bit of an update. So next week will be the last one. So anyone you know who's been to Brighton and enjoyed it, wouldn't it be wonderful to get them all back again for one final shindig next Sunday? Uh, uh, gates open at 10. Uh, service starts 10.30-ish, and uh, we're going to worship the name of Jesus. And also, they're already, the, the, the sound team are already planning to run the sound system on uh, a system that um, we've been uh, putting together over the weeks and months that can, in, in other words, instead of lugging out all our speakers and everything from our church and ripping our church apart every week, we're going to have we're, we're going to be in a position where we've got an actual on-the-road PA system. So we'll be running that next Sunday. So pray for us that everything will go well with that. And uh, we're just going to have a great time. One last session together. And uh, we're going to preach the gospel. Amen? And so if you've got lost, yeah, yeah. If you've got lost friends and family and people don't know the Lord, then please, please, please invite them along to the last drive-in. This is your opportunity to invite them to a drive-in church. So we're going to sing the blessing over you and uh, and then we'll go our separate ways. Uh, If you need more prayer, as Paul mentioned, then just pull over to the right as you're leaving and there'll be some people there ready to pray for you. Thank you for all your support. Don't forget the buckets as you leave. If you want to make a donation, then please put some money in the buckets. We appreciate your support throughout driving. Isn't it wonderful? that it's not cost us a penny to do driving for 18 weeks. I know, I wish I could run my church like that. It's amazing. And, uh, you know, if you can keep supporting us, keep looking out. If you've not liked the driving page, like the driving page, because that will soon change, hopefully, to driving Christmas carols. And then you'll know what's happening and we'll communicate. I did put a post up this last week about open heavens and uh, put that out there for people to see. And so it's not meant to be a big group uh, driving church. It's meant to be a group of people who have a heart to reach the people of Torbay with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so to connect everything together that's going on around the bay evangelistically.
Have a great week.